Hi, I'm Daniel from ITK and today we're going to talk about authentication in Unified Diagnostic Services or shortly UDS. Yeah, today we're going to talk about UDS and um, authentication in UDS and uh, I've prepared some notes for myself and uh, now I'm happy to answer your question, Sebastian. Yeah, first of all, Daniel, welcome to our next video of our ITK cybersecurity video channel. I'm really happy that you're here because you have already some experience on new services uh, in the standard of UDS. And I have a very first question, which is why do we need security for UDS sessions at all? Yeah, um, UDS or Unified Diagnostic um, Services is uh, used quite quite often. Um, it is um, meanwhile the standard to access um, di all diagnostic services in an ECU inside a vehicle. And uh, with that you can get access um, to all diagnostic interfaces. You can change uh, parameters, uh, settings or configurations in uh, that, that ECU. So with that, you can change the parameters of your uh, brakes, of your steering system and um, also of your, of your engine. And uh, now, um, as most of these parameters that you can change over there um, are safety uh, relevant, it makes sense to only allow access to um, certain um, authorized uh, personnel. And um, ad in addition to that, in certain regions, it is also uh, legally required um, that um, you cannot uh, change uh, all these um, settings um, arbitrarily in your um, ECUs. And uh, that's why we really need to uh, protect these diagnostic um, interfaces um, to only authorized um, yeah, personnel. Got you, got you. But, but as far as I know, there is a service for securing UDS around for years now. Why do we talk about that uh, in the light of the fact that there is the UDS Service 27, which is secure access, isn't it? Yeah, right. Um, UDS Service 27 is the uh, security access and uh, that allows you to unlock your ECE, uh, ECU uh, within, within a particular key. So you can compare that when you want to unlock um, the front door at your, at your home. You need that key and if you have that key and the key matches, um, you can get in. And that is um, similar to an ECU um, uh, as well. And uh, with that, you can um, encode that key in a diagnostic tester. The tester can then uh, unlock that ECU and you can get access to all the diagnostic uh, interfaces that are mapped uh, to that uh, key. Um, however, uh, this right now is um, yeah, quite, um, quite unflexible. Um, as you need um, a, um, a new key uh, to, to, or you need to have that key to everyone who needs to, to access that uh, di diagnostic uh, interfaces. And uh, it is quite, quite, quite limited. You just need to have that key and then um, the access is yours. So you're saying there is a new service um, in UDS that is better for security. What are the fundamentals of the service? What is this service all about? Can you give, give us some insights on that? Exactly. That is the new um, service, um, which is um, the service uh, 29. It is called authentication and is part of the UDS standard since the beginning of uh, 2020. And um, this new service now uses uh, a real authentication uh, mechanisms uh, based on state-of-the-art uh, cryptographic uh, primitives. And um, it can use um, a challenge response-based protocol or um, digital uh, certificates to um, get access uh, to, to an um, ECU. And um, with that, you don't uh, need to have that key to open uh, ECU. You'd use a digital uh, certificate that can be tailored to your particular uh, needs, to, you, to that particular diagnostic services that you need access to. So you are talking about certificates that are probably issued by uh, underlying P PKI, public-private key infrastructure and such. So what are the advantages of, of using a PKI and certificates for the authentication of UDS sessions? Yeah, uh, right. As you said, um, the digital uh, certificates that are used in, um, in UDS 29 authentication uh, can be issued uh, by a PKI. Um, and uh, therefore, the PKI has the control to define 
who um, has is able to access which uh, diagnostic um, services on which uh, ECU. So, for example, you can uh, limit um, in an ECU, uh, in a certificate who can be able to use that um, certificate. You can uh, limit to which ECUs does this um, certificate um, apply, and you can limit um, the uh, validity um, of uh, those uh, certificates. And in addition, you can encode a particular user wall. Um, of what will show the user of that um, uh, certificate have on that ECU, and you can also encode additional uh, dynamic um, access rights in that um, certificate. And then you can just show this certificate to the ECU. You then need to um, just authenticate that you are the particular owner um, of that uh, certificate, and then um, the ECU can grant you access to exactly those um, diagnostic services that you need access to. So this sounds like a very promising approach. We are um, building everything on top of um, modern cryptography and PKI infrastructures and, and such. So um, my question would be, what are the challenges in uh, bringing 29 into the ECUs? What are, what are the challenges in designing the whole thing, um, implementing the whole thing? What do you think? Yeah, you're right. Um, UDS brings a lot of new advantages. It makes it way easier to configure your um, access words. And um, the standard so far um, uh, defines all the uh, technical um, baselines. So it's defined how an ECU can uh, communicate with with and test and stuff like, like that. But uh, what's now uh, open and what's up to you um, is to um, define the access rights that you need. Uh, what information do you really want to encode in uh, certificates? How you do you uh, set up your PKI in order to um, have those um, access rights distributed um, to all the entities um, that you want to provide with access uh, to your um, indiv uh, individual uh, ECUs. And that's what is open up to you um, to define that, to decide when in, in which um, scenarios uh, a user needs to talk to your uh, PKI system uh, before or in which um, situations it might be um, sufficient to have an offline um, certificate that can work all the time to unlock your ECU. Got you. So this sounds like a lot of room for, I wouldn't say interpretation, but tailoring um, to your individual needs. Um, from your experience, and I know that you have uh, uh, supported a lot of companies for bringing in UDS uh, Service 29 into their ECUs and vehicles. From your experience, is it easy to bring it in or are there um, hurdles to take? Um, of course, um, it uh, requires a lot of information um, about uh, what are your typical uh, use cases, how do you uh, structure your, your production plant, how do you structure um, the, the after uh, market access um, to um, UDS um, interfaces. And uh, that is all the information that you need to, to gather and then uh, you can create um, a proper certificate structure, a PKI structure um, out of it um, that exactly tailors um, the UDS um, system uh, to, to your uh, designs. And that is not a decision uh, on whether you are an OEM or whether you are a um, uh, supplier. In both uh, scenarios, you should be possible to exactly tailor um, the uh, technical baseline that is provided in the UDS standard and also in the outer standard uh, to your particular demands um, that you have for your particular um, scenarios. Daniel, thank you for these insights into uh, the new Service 29 on uh, UDS. Um, what would be your take home messages or what would be the set of your take home messages um, for all our um, followers and subscri subscribers who want to dig deeper into the Service 29? Yeah, uh, for that, let me first uh, summarize again what um, UDS uh, 29 authentication um, is about. Um, UDS 29 authentication is the new uh, alternative um, to the uh, yeah, commonly in place um, UDS um, security access. Um, it makes use of modern cryptographic uh, primitives and um, allows um, authentication by means of digital um, certificate. And um, therefore, it provides you with the uh, way higher um, flexibility and a more fine-grained um, access uh, control. 
And um, as I said, the technical baselines for that is already provided by the UDS standard and also uh, by the AutoZone standard uh, documents. And uh, now it's up to you um, to bring um, this standard into place and adapt it to tailor it to your particular needs um, that, that you have um, at your company to really lower um, the, the operational um, overhead for XOR or for authenticating um, to your uh, diagnostic services. Thank you very much for all the insights on UDS. I'm sure you've opened that door for many of our uh, watchers and uh, followers and subscribers of the video channel. Uh, I hope everyone has already subscribed to the uh, video channel. Um, thanks, Daniel. Again, it was a pleasure to have such an experienced cybersecurity engineer here in the house today. Um, thanks for the interview. That was great insights into UDS Service 29. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian, for your questions. And thank you all for watching.